Okay, hi, and welcome to the Playwork Essentials videos, a partnership between Addis Gwydoli and Cymru Adult Learning Wales and Play Wales. Uh, I'm your tutor, Martin King Sheard. So today we're going to be looking at reflective practice um, and uh, some top tips for how we go about our reflective practice. Okay, so here are our top tips for reflective practice. First of all, when we talk about reflective practice, what do we mean by that? Well, when we refer back to our playwork principles, principle six says that the playworker's response to children and young people is based on a sound and up-to-date knowledge of the play process and reflective practice. So that's really important when we think about our whole response to children, everything we do, how we respond to their play is based on our knowledge of the play process through our training, through our reading, through our professional development and our reflective practice. So just those two things, it shows how important reflective practice is in order to respond effectively to children. So when we talk about reflective practice, we're actually thinking, talking about uh, thinking deeply about what we do with an aim to improve our professional practice. It's a really, really important part of our ongoing learning and it should be seen as part of our continuing professional development. While it's lovely to be able to pay to go to training and conferences and things like that, reflective practice is actually a part of our day-to-day -day learning and professional development. And it's a structured approach. So it's very simplistic, it means we identify a problem, we reflect around upon and analyze that problem, and then we draw conclusions to plan for the future and hopefully make improvements to our practice. So our top tip number one is make time for reflection. We will all reflect in different ways and we will all reflect at different times, but understanding when we naturally reflect uh, is a really, really important part of reflective practice. So we, we might benefit from going for a walk, we might reflect on our way home from work, we might enjoy reflecting with others, or we might reflect uh, by writing in a journal. Whichever way we reflect, it's important we recognise that and make time to do it. Alongside that, it's important that we don't force it. Some of the best reflections come at us by surprise. Um, so it's about making time to think things through, but without necessarily really trying to overly analyse what we do. If we're going to reflect well individually, we also need to make sure we can reflect well as part of a team. So things like team meetings, supervisions and appraisal, uh, even just tidying up at the end of a session, is a nice way of us being able to reflect with our colleagues. We should identify where those opportunities are to reflect together um, and build, in, build on those opportunities to, to reflect together. And within that, we need to acknowledge that everybody will reflect in slightly different ways. So if you're a team of people who like to reflect by talking things through, there's no point giving everybody a reflective diary and telling them to go and work on their own. Give those people time to chat things through and work together as a team to reflect together. So part of reflective practice, if you're reflecting with others, is that, that approach of being a critical friend. Uh, and being a critical friend is not necessarily about being devil, devil's advocate and always giving the opposite side of things. It's about asking probing questions in a supportive way uh, and maybe trying to look at things from a slightly different angle that can help our colleagues to, to reflect. So it's about being critical, but the friendship part of that's really important. We need to try and nurture and support our colleagues. The sorts of questions that can help are what if, why questions, how did things feel, uh, what do we need to do to make changes? These are the sort of open-ended questions that can really help probe deeper into our practice about things that have happened and how we might behave differently next time. It's also really important that we keep an open mind. The more open we can be when we're doing our reflective practice, the more creative we can be in coming up with solutions to potential problems. Uh, the opportunity for learners, um, for, for staff to uh, take risks, to, to, to try things out and nurture a, a, a culture within our setting that allows that to happen, um, helps with keeping an open mind and also helps with creating and making innovative practice. Reflection can be active and it can be passive. So we've said earlier about not forcing it. Sometimes our best reflections will come when we aren't, uh, we aren't um, anticipating it. So on the drive home, on the walk with the dog, uh, while we're in the bath. Um, sometimes those thoughts or solutions will just present themselves. 
Other times we have to be more proactive and using reflective pra practice models can be a useful way of being more active, working with our colleagues to be critical friends. Those are ways of more actively probing our practice. We really need to think about our, our our core beliefs uh, in, in undertaking reflective practice. So we will have a lot of knowledge that we've gained from doing playwork training and qualifications and professional development that will give us theories that we can help to use with our reflective practice. Things like the play cycle, using loose parts, um, the playwork curriculum, uh, the playwork principles themselves. Those are theories that can help us unpick our practice. But it's also important to recognise that as individuals, we will have our own beliefs. We'll have our own beliefs about economics, about politics, about society. And those things will all affect our practice. That's not a problem that we have our own beliefs, but they will affect our practice. So using those core beliefs and recognising those core beliefs and using the theories that we have within Playwork are, are all important things to use uh, in picking apart our practice through reflective practice. Uh, and finally, let's just remember that it's reflective practice. If all you're doing is reflecting and thinking about what you've done, you're really just thinking. The important thing about reflective practice is that there is an outcome to it that will actually affect what you do. Now that outcome might just be a mental note to say actually next time I'm gonna do things slightly differently, um, but, it, but it might be something that you need to talk to the wider team about or talk to your managers about or actually change policy within your organization, update a risk assessment, or even go and access further training. So it's always important to think about, well, I've, I've identified this problem, I've analyzed kind of what perhaps happened and how I might make improvements. Now, what do we do to put that into practice on an individual, on a team, on a setting, or even a wider regional level if you work at that level? So I hope that's been helpful to you. There are reflective practice top tips. For more information on reflective practice, check the links in the video below. We've actually developed an information sheet that's based on exactly what I've just talked about. And don't miss our other Playwork Essentials videos by keeping an eye on our social media. And thanks very much for watching.